This is the ASUS ZenBook Duo, and ASUS was kind enough to partner on this video so that I can showcase this laptop to you early. And on the outside, this thing looks very similar to the ASUS ZenBook 14, but obviously it's a different laptop. Like this is a Duo laptop, which means it has to have two displays. But even though it looks like a ZenBook 14 on the outside, it's when you open it up that all the magic happens. And look, you're asking yourself, Matt, what kind of trickery is this? You know, where, where's the second display? Like that's something all duos have. And on previous duos, they had the second display at the top over here. They shifted the keyboard down and placed the trackpad on the right hand side. Now this was a good idea. It was really cool, but it didn't make for the best typing experience. And if you were left-handed like me, having the trackpad so small on the right hand side was kind of uncomfortable, which forced you to buy an external mouse. But this is different because the second display is actually right under the keyboard. And that's what makes this implementation so cool because there's no ceremonial process of setting this up. Like if you take something like the Yoga Book 9i, cool idea, but you have to like take out the case, you gotta do some origami, you gotta put it in this position and in that position, and it's time consuming, you know? This guy over here, you don't have to do that. Like I'm someone who appreciates this design because 90% of the time or even 80% of the time, I'm gonna be using it as a traditional laptop. But as soon as I wanna use a dual screen display, all I have to do is take off the keyboard, the second display pops open, on the back over here, there's a metal hinge, which is very tight, and I can place this laptop with two screens like this. Like that is really, really freaking cool. And then this keyboard goes from being connected via pogo pins which by the way, keeps it charged the entire time and it automatically switches to Bluetooth and I can place this keyboard anywhere I want and it automatically connects to the laptop. Now the beauty of having two stack displays on a laptop is that your eye level is perfect. It's not like with a desktop computer and you stack two monitors, they're bigger screens. So most of the time you're looking up or if you have them beside each other, you're looking left or right. This is always in your peripheral. So you just get better ergonomics when you're using two displays. Now you can obviously have it stacked like this, which I personally think is the best setup for this type of experience, but you can manipulate manipulate these displays in, in various ways. For one, both displays obviously go flat against the table, so you could use it like this. If you have someone on the other side of you, you can put it in sharing mode, so you can be doing something on your screen, and then if you go to you know the Screen Expert app, which is built into this laptop, you can share the other display with the person in front of you, and it will flip whatever they're looking at to their direction. Of course, you can obviously put this in portrait mode. My suggestion is to take the hinge and put it as far back as as possible so that you get the best experience. And once it's in that position, you have the opportunity to use two displays in a portrait orientation. Now the gap on this is a little bit different. The gap's not flat directly against each other. There's a bit of a distance, like one of the displays feels like it's on top of the other. You don't really notice it when it's in landscape mode, but you can kind of see it in portrait mode. Like it puts one of the displays behind you, but honestly, I'd rather this setup than having to like take multiple items out just to get the same experience. Now these displays are absolutely gorgeous. Like we're talking about 2800 by 1800, 16 by 10 OLED displays. They're 120 Hertz, fantastic color accuracy, really good color gamut. Screen brightness is very good. 500 nits of peak brightness. Like if you're using this for creative work or just to watch content on it, your eyeballs are going to sing in joy when you put them on this display. Now there's obviously a lot of software built into this. So like if you don't wanna use the keyboard for whatever reason, you can obviously tap the screen to get multiple functions to arise. For example, if I tap the bottom screen with three fingers, it's going to bring up the touchpad. And if I tap it with six fingers, it's going to bring up the virtual keyboard. You can also have a web page open, for example, and then you can just drag it with your finger flick it to the bottom, then it's gonna automatically expand all the way open and you can obviously do the same thing to the top. If you wanna use both displays as one big web page, you can obviously do that. You just take all five fingers and you swipe and then the next thing you know is you have a full web page over here. So that's what it kind of looks like if you're using the entire two displays 
as one full web page. Also, if you take six fingers and you swipe down, a bunch of utilities will pop up on the bottom display. You'll get things like being able to control the volume, a tinier virtual keyboard, access to certain applications. In fact, you can take a bunch of applications, put them into a task group so that every time you open up that task group, it will automatically adjust and designate specific parts of the display to the apps that you've selected. So this is a really great way to like get started automatically if you just got into a work and there's specific applications you're using. Now Asus has created an app called Screen Expert that gives you more granular control over these displays. So once you press it, it kind of floats on the display. If you press this little sun icon, you can basically adjust the brightness of each display independently. So if you want the top one darker, the bottom one brighter, you can obviously do that. Or you can sync them both so that the brightness is identical every single time. This one over here enables or disables the virtual keyboard. The keyboard icon tells you exactly how much battery life left is in the detachable keyboard. This one right here disables the bottom display if you don't want to use it anymore and obviously save some battery life. I should also note that this 120 hertz display is dynamic. So it will switch between 60 and 120 hertz. If you disconnect it, you want to save some more battery life, it will go down to 60 hertz, which is kind of convenient. This one right here allows you to put it in sharing mode. This one locks the orientation. Microphone option will enable or disable the microphone. And then this one right here allows you to to create those task groups. And finally, if you wanna get full access to other stuff, you can open up the settings menu. Now you do have the option to use dynamic wallpapers if you really want to. There is no fingerprint scanner, but they have included facial recognition at the top using Windows Hello. So this is what the 1080p webcam looks like. Right now I have auto framing on, so it will follow me around the room. This is part of the new AI features from Intel's Meteor Lakes MPU. It also has portrait blur and all that kind of other stuff. But the coolest thing is the AI noise cancellation. So right now I'm going to turn on the blow dryer. You should be able to hear it. And then in the next clip, I'm going to turn on AI and you shouldn't be able to hear it that much. And now I'm talking with the blow dryer on. The AI should be significantly reducing the sound coming from the blow dryer and the other person listening to this should have obviously a more pleasant experience. Now I do want to talk about this keyboard because it's actually really, really good. Like I was shocked. Like I thought this was going to be some crappy flimsy Bluetooth keyboard, but no, this feels really comfortable to type on. It has good travel distance. It feels very comfortable. The actuation is good. The keys are nice and big. They're clicky. They have a good sound to them. Even the touchpad is really, really big. And the best part about it is it's actually glass. Now, obviously, if you take it off the top part, it does feel flat on a table because it doesn't have the ergo hinge like this laptop does, but it's fine. Like most of the time it's gonna be on here and the times that it's not, like I don't think it's gonna be that big of a difference. In terms of overall weight without the keyboard, it's under three pounds and with the keyboard, it's about 3.68 pounds. So it's not a super heavy laptop. I should also let you know that this hinge has been screwed down twice over here. It's a very solid hinge. Like when I open this thing up, like it stays, which I really, really like. Sound is coming out of two speakers on the bottom of the laptop. Now performance on this is really good. It does use Intel's new Meteor Lake CPU. So this one has an Intel Core Ultra 7155H, but you can get it with an Intel Core Ultra 9 if you really want to. This has 32 gigabytes of LPDDR5X RAM, two 14 inch 16 by 10 OLED displays, 120 Hertz touch. You can write on it. This has two terabytes of NVMe SSD storage, but I think most of them just come with one. And of course, I don't know the price tag yet, but I will put it in this video or in the description as soon as I find out. Now, I did work in DaVinci Resolve using this laptop. Like I wouldn't buy this specific one to edit 4K video all day long. I'd probably choose one of Asus's laptops that have a dedicated GPU, but these Meteor Lake processors are obviously an upgrade compared to last year's model. I was able to get in there, make some changes, render the file out without any issues at all. I really like this laptop for any sort of Photoshop work. Just having access to two displays is so nice, you know, especially when they're OLED and it just looks so good. But the main way I was using this laptop was for two things. One, to do my taxes. So I'd have like QuickBooks on the bottom and then on the top, I'd be like looking at my receipts, 
my expenses, and then typing it into the second display on the bottom. As for ports, on the left-hand side, you have a USB 3.2 port, two Thunderbolt 4 ports, and another Type-C port on the keyboard. On the right-hand side, HDMI 2.1 and a combo audio jack. Now internally, RAM is all soldered onto the motherboard. The only thing that is upgradable is the NVMe SSD. And getting into this laptop is obviously not as easy as a regular traditional notebook. You have two displays. It's a little bit more delicate. You do have a quick access port on the bottom over here, but it really doesn't give you access to much. It's just, you know, quick look at some of your PCB, maybe the motherboard cable, and that's about it. You probably have to disconnect it first if you wanna take this off so you don't rip the display cable as well. But the battery is 75 watt hours, which means I got over 12 hours of use before needing to charge, which is really good for a laptop that has two displays. Now this test was done only with one display going. Obviously, if you're using both displays at the same time, expect that battery life to be reduced. Now, this is obviously not a gaming laptop, but the new Intel Arc GPUs are a big improvement compared to previous year's Iris Xe. More than double the performance. So if there's older titles, you wanna play, you can obviously do that on this laptop, assuming you might have to drop the settings a little bit, just because again, this is an integrated GPU, but the performance is much better. But look, I like the implementation of the ZenBook Duo. I think it makes way more sense compared to what they did the years before. You actually now have two big displays that you can completely utilize. You have a keyboard that's external, but also feels good. But most importantly to me, there's no ceremony process. You know, like you open up the laptop and you're ready to work. You don't have to open it up and fiddle with some sort of Bluetooth case just so your laptop can stand up. The hinge on the back is nice and supportive and it just gives you access to your work immediately. Anyways, if you have any more questions, let me know in the comment section down below along with a link to this laptop, which will be in the description. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.